Good morning everybody. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, so this video will cover about chapter 6 in our syllabus. Okay, so it is about data design concepts. I have divided the syllabus in chapter 6 into three sub topics okay so the first subtopic will cover about data design concepts dbms components web-based database design and then uh, we have the second part about the normalization about the data design and data relationship and the third section is on the database models data storage and data control Alright, so in this video, I'm going to cover the first part and also the second part. However, for the second part, I believe you already learned uh, deeply in the ICT 200 subject. Okay, your first database subject. So you have already learned about the relationship one to many, one to one, many to many. And then you have already learned how to normalize the relationship. You have the 1 and F, 2 and F, and also the 3 and F. So basically, the second part about the data design relationship and normalization, I won't uh, explain again in detail. Okay, because you have already learned. Jadi, I do not think there is a necessary for me to re-explain again to you. Okay, so basically for this video, we are going to cover only the first part. And then we are going to look into some of the questions that might be asked. Okay, and then we are going to proceed the next video with the third subject. Okay, so data design concepts, alright, okay, so you are becoming the system analyst, okay, so you have to understand the basic data design concepts, including the structures and also how it evolves, okay, so what is actually a structure, what is actually what we call as the data structure, so, the data structure is actually the framework, okay, for you to organize, for you to store, and for you to manage the data, okay. So, the framework consists of files, or you might be more familiar with tables that interact in various ways, okay. So, all these tables have their relationship. Either do you need the bridge, if you have the many-to-many -many relationship, you have to, you need to have the bridge within so that you can, um, you can convert from many-to-many -many relationship into one-to-many, okay? And you can see that every table contains data, contains attributes about the people if you have uh, tables about students so you have the attributes about the students you have attributes about the people you have the students name you have the students ID you have the students address you have the students CGPA okay uh, for the oh, <coughs> for the older and more legacy system we call it as file oriented Okay, and you can see down here is the explanation for the file oriented. It is actually a more to manual method of filing the system in an organization. Okay, so these files or folders will be labeled. Okay, and they will be stored in one or more cabinets. Okay, under locks and key for safety and security reason. Okay. As and when required, the concerned person or usually the person in charge will search for the specific folder. So usually they have this what we call as the file room. Okay, so they keep everything in the file room and uh, for the purpose of uh, lembaga hasil, Usually, we are required to keep the files up until 7 years. Okay, so we need to have a very 
suitable room to keep all the files for seven years. Okay, the room must be conducive. Ah, uh, usually they are the aircon lah, so that it will prevent the documents from kulapuk dan sebagainya. Ah, uh, okay. So that is the more manual and more traditional way. Okay, so this is what we call as the uh, framework. Okay, you can see here that you have the relationship, and usually you are going to have the cardinality. Okay, zero to one, one to many. Ah, uh, okay, and then you are going to have the attributes down here. Okay, mechanic number, the name, the period, higher date, and everything. Okay, so this is the sample. Okay, example for the framework. For shop operations system. Okay, so is file processing still important? Okay, so some companies still use the the old legacy system to handle large volumes of structured data. Okay, so they use the file processing because it works well with the mainframe hardware and batch input. Okay, even though uh, until today, okay, until today, there are some companies who are still using this, uh, what we call as old legacy system, because in terms of the cost for their situation, it is more cost effective compared to the uh, database management system. Uh, for example, this uh, newly startup company. Okay, company ni ialah company yang baru ditubuhkan mungkin around 1 to 2 years. Okay, and ditambah lagi dengan company itu beroperasi semasa musim PKP, everything must still be paid. Okay, sewa kedai masih lagi kena bayar tapi mungkin the customer is lesser. Okay, company jumlah, eh sorry, jumlah customer tu berkurangan. So, in order for this company to survive, so, dia berpendapat untuk adanya satu database framework uh, yang lebih modern. Pada dia, itu bukanlah satu urgency. Uh, because dia ialah company baru, baru beroperasi 2 tahun dan dia lebih memerlukan duit untuk duit itu untuk rolling dia punya operational. Uh, so, that is why maybe for that case, uh, the older legacy file processing masih lagi relevant. Uh, okay, tetapi mungkin keadaan dia itu tidak relevant pula dengan company yang dah more established companies. Okay, yang dah mungkin dah ada franchise. For instance, KFC. For instance, apa lagi yang ada franchise? Usually, kita boleh ambil makanan lah sebagai yang the easier one, McDonald's kan? Okay, so you imagine they have a franchise all over Malaysia. Okay, dan uh, walaupun PKP, okay, walaupun PKP, the number of customer who wants to eat KFC, who wants to eat McDonald's, it's not uh, reduced. Ditambah lagi dengan kita adanya hikmat uh, food panda, hikmat grab food. So, I do not think the number of customer berkurangan yang nak makan McDonald's and yang nak makan KFC ni. Okay. So, in terms of cost, maybe dia tidak begitu terkesan. And it is uh, not suitable for them to have uh, the older legacy filing system because of they have franchise all over Malaysia. Can lebih baik, lebih effective business dia tu to have the the computerized database framework berbanding dengan the manual one. Ah, so kita melihat kepada situations of the companies. Some situation tak sama. Okay, so kita akan tengok kepada the companies and the, we are going to decide at that particular moment which method is more effective for them. Either to have a more computerized database framework or still keeping the older legacy filing system. Okay, get the idea eh?
Alright. So, if you go for the more modern computerized database framework, usually you are going to have this database environment. Okay. So, this database environment, I, I know you will be familiar with DBMS. Usually, we, we call it as DBMS. Okay. A very popular DBMS software is the MySQL. MySQL. Microsoft Access. Uh, even now we have the Oracle. Even you don't study Oracle, but we have the Oracle. Okay, majority of the company also adopts Oracle, and we have the IBM DB2, the one that you have learned in ICT 200. So using this uh, popular DBMS software, it it permits you, it enables you to add, update, manage, access, and also analyze the data. Okay, so these are a few advantages of DBMS. The first one is on the scalability. So if you are using the DBMS, if the company employs the DBMS, the system can be easily expanded. It can be easily modified according to the rapid changing needs of the business enterprise. That's why as a system analyst, okay, in order for you to ensure the system that you are developed is successful, you have to make sure your database structure is in perfect condition. Database perfect, insyaAllah awak punya interface tak ada masalah and your system will work properly. Ha, tapi kalau awak ada masalah dari segi database awak, awak punya interface cantik macam mana pun, kita risau akan ada masalah when you want to uh, launch awak punya sistem nanti. Because database awak is like the backbone. Ha, database tu dia dah macam tulang belakang. Okay. And then the second advantage is on the economy of scale. Okay, so database design allows better utilization of hardware. Uh, if a company maintains an enterprise-wide database, processing is less expensive using powerful servers and communication networks. Ini yang maksud saya economy of scale tadi. Okay, so your database sebagai tulang belakang. Kalau database awak bagus, then benda-benda lain pun awak boleh jimat. Ah, Dia umpamanya macam kita beli laptop baru dengan laptop second hand lah. Okay, so if you opt to purchase the new laptop, it might be uh, it might be expensive. Okay, uh, pada awalnya tetapi you you can use your 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 first hand laptop tu maybe up to 5 years. Uh, sekarang saya tengok laptop punya jangka hayat 5 tahun. 5 tahun tu kalau kita service lagi may up to 6 more years lah. Okay, 6 years more. Okay, tapi berbanding dengan if you buy the second hand laptop or third hand laptop, it might last for 2 years to or 2 to 3 years lah. Ah, okay, so jadinya after 2 to 3 years, you need to buy another laptop. Ah, jadi ketahanan dia tu tidak lama. So, sama jugalah macam kita punya database management system. Okay, and then the third advantage is enterprise-wide application. So typically, this DBMS is managed by a person called a database administrator. Okay, so DBA, database administrator, is one of the job. Okay, is one of the occupation available for this under this database uh, scope. Okay, so this DBA person will be the one to access the overall requirements and maintains the database for the benefit of the entire organization rather than a single department or user. Okay. Alright. So, these are another advantages of DBMS. Okay. We are going to have 
stronger standards, better security, and also data independence. Okay, so this is I have already told you. Although the trend is towards the enterprise-wide database design, many companies still use a combination of centralized DBMS and smaller department-level database. So why? Because every company have different concerns. Ah, okay. So they have the they have their own reasons okay so kalau tadi kita tengok dia punya masalah in terms of dia punya costing so another masalah okay another problem could be okay in terms of the complexity if this uh, company is about to adopt or is about to implement the enterprise wide dbms it can be highly complex they might not have enough dba to handle the complexity of the database so they thought that okay tak payahlah kita go for dbms yang cover the whole organization kita just cover the department level sahaja okay so tak sama Ah, the condition tak sama. Okay, so ingat, you are going to develop a system that is efficient to the target user yang awak dah kenal pasti. Kalau target user awak tu comes from a more rural areas, mungkin daripada kawasan yang sedikit pedalaman, yang mana dia punya line internet tu is limited. The internet access is limited. So, mungkin awak punya system tu, you cannot have lots of graphics, you cannot have lots of pictures, lots of videos. Because bila ada lots of graphics, lots of videos, uh, dia punya download rate tu menjadi perlahan. Uh, so, bila download rate tu menjadi perlahan, nanti bila user log in into the system, dia cuma nampak apa? Nampak what? screen sahaja tak nampak dia punya content so berkesan ke tak berkesan juga ah okey so tapi kalau misal kata your user itu memang berada dekat kawasan bandar kan dekat kawasan urban and they do not have any uh, problems regarding the internet access so ah uh, kalau macam tu boleh lah awak nak ada all the videos all the apa uh, orang kata high-end punya graphics uh, Itu tak ada masalah uh, Okay, so you have to look at the requirements The, the apa orang kata uh, Yalah, the requirements and the desire of your user Okay Alright So for DBMS, they have four components Okay The first one, they have the interfaces for the users, database administrators, and also related system. The second one is data manipulation language. The third one is schema and subschema. And the fourth one is the physical data repository. Okay. So, the first component, okay. Between the users, the database administrators and related system, they are going to have different interfaces. Okay? Why? For the users, they typically work with the predefined queries and switchboard commands. So, their interface must work well with the, ataupun must integrate related to the, Query language, query by example, SQL. Ah, uh, inilah interface yang awak dah belajar masa ICT 200. Ah, uh, ingat kan masa IBM DB2? Because you are going to have your query, your SQL, how to add, ah, uh, how to add new tables, how to edit existing tables. How to add tables that you are no longer required. Ah, Okay, so you ada the typical interface for users that is usually used to construct your SQL. 
How about the DBA, Database Administrator? Usually, DBA concerns with the security, the integrity, preventing unauthorized access, backup, audit trails, maintaining the database. So, their interface is not similar to you. Okay, and you have to remember your database might be related to other system as well. Ah, okay. So if your database is connected to other system, you have to make sure or you have to remember that no human intervention is required. So how about the interfaces for them? So it won't be similar. Okay, All right. The second component is the data manipulation language. Okay, so D DML, okay, data manipulation language, is the one that controls the database operation. Okay, and then you ask me, what is actually the language to manipulate the data? Okay, update is one of the examples. Create is another example. Insert is another example. Delete is another example. So that is the language to manipulate the data in the DBMS. So using these languages, it allows you to, uh, to change, to manipulate the contents of data in the DBMS. Okay? Alright. And then the third one is schema. Okay, so schema is the uh, complete definition of a database, including the description of all fields, tables, and relationship. You can also define one or more subschema. Okay, senang cerita lah subschema ni. Okay, satu schema. Okay, if you look at the right uh, figure here, okay, you have schema. Okay, dekat sini awak ada skema. Under the skema, you have three sub-skema. You have sub-skema A, you have sub-skema B, you have sub-skema C. Okay, and you can see here, every sub-skema have different types of user. User 1 relates to sub-skema A. User 2 and user 3 relates to sub-skema B. User 4 and user 5 relates to sub-schema B. Okay, bermaksud apa? Katalah user 1 ni ialah student. So, bila student tu, apa dia punya access level? Dia punya sub-schema dia tu sampai level mana sahaja? Katalah student can log in. Okay, let's say student can log in, can add can edit. However, student is not allowed to delete. Okay. And then for user number 2, we have the lecturer from the same faculty and we have the lecturer from different faculty, for example. Okay. So, via access is logged in, add, edit and delete. Okay, so nampak tak? Alright, and then for user number 4 and user number 5. So, they might be the KPP and also the Timbalan Rector. Alright, okay. So, what they can do? They can log in, they can add, they can edit, they can delete, they can view report. Ah, okay, so that is what we call as different subschema for different types of people. Different access level for different types of people. Ah, okay, so if you, if one fine day you will involve in the database uh, job, okay, so this is part of the things that you have to configure. The schema and also the subschema. And the fourth component is about the physical data repository. Physical data repository means uh, they will have this uh, centralized 
uh, or distributed location. Maksudnya dekat mana awak punya database tu will be placed. Okay, usually kita ada ODBC dengan JDBC. Usually lah. Okay, so ODBC is Open Database Connectivity. Okay, it is the industrial standard protocol that makes it possible for the software from different vendors to interact and exchange the data. So, ODBC uses SQL statements that the DBMS understand and can execute. Another platform is the JDBC. So, JDBC is about is uh, more towards the Java connectivity. So, it enables the Java ex uh, application to exchange the data with any database that uses the SQL statement and it is JDBC compliance. So, just remember O is for the open database connectivity. J is for more towards the Java database connectivity. So, yang awak belajar, I believe it is more towards ODBC. Next semester, if you... If you enroll dalam uh, subjek CSC 301, uh, Visual Programming, uh, that, uh, that subjek also uses ODBC sebagai dia punya physical repository. Okay? Alright. And then, uh, the next part is the web-based data design. Okay, a little bit of the overview. The internet serves as the front end or interface. Okay, front end or interface for the database management system. Internet technology provides enormous power and flexibility. Okay, because the system is not tied to any specific combination of hardware and software. So, access to the database usually requires the web browser. Tak kisahlah. Usually, kita pakai Chrome. Okay, usually. Uh, usually, kita pakai Chrome. But still, you can use other web browser. Opera, Microsoft Edge dan sebagainya. And also, you need the internet connection. Okay. So, web-based system, very popular lah. Even until now, very popular. Because they offer ease of access. Very cost-effective and most uh, important thing, it is worldwide connectivity. So, everywhere you go, okay, awak pergi dekat different countries sekalipun, you can still access. Okay, so this is the characteristics of the web-based data design I extract from the textbook. You can check with the textbook, with your textbook as well, okay. You are going to have the global access, ease of use, multiple platforms, cost effectiveness, security issues, and adaptability issues. Okay, and then uh, connecting to the web to access data in a web-based system. The database must be connected to the internet or intranet. Okay. So, however, the database and the internet speaks two different language. So, it needs the middleman. Okay, the middleman, right? So, what is the solution? So, the middleman, we call it as the middleware. Okay, it is actually the software that integrates different applications and allows them to exchange the data. Okay, you can see here lah. Okay, so here we need the middleware. Alright, so this is the web server. Okay, this is the client workstation. Okay, and then this is the database server. So, katalah macam awak kan. Okay, awak sebagai user. Okay, awak menggunakan awak punya laptop. Awak request web page. Katalah www.abc.com.my. Contoh. Okay, and then the web page kita kena cari the the data and everything from the database server, right? Okay, 
So using the internet or intranet, the web server will submit the query to database server. Okay, and then the database server submits retrieve data to the web server. Because of this database server, okay, dengan web server ni, dia speaks different language. So orang cakap bahasa Inggeris, so orang cakap bahasa Melayu. So dia kena middleman, dia kena ada dia punya, apa rumah dia cakap? Dia kena ada dia punya uh, translator. Kenapa? Sebab web server, web kita pakai HTML. Kalau database, ah itulah tadi. Awak pakai DB2, awak pakai Oracle. So, language dia berbeza. That's why middleware ni diperlukan sebagai translator. Supaya in the end, awak akan nampaklah the web page yang awak nak tu. Ah, tapi kalau sebagai user biasa yang mungkin tidak familiar with the ICT terms, dia mungkin tak tahu kenapa kita perlukan middleware. But you, as the person yang memang involved in ICT, you have to know. Ah, sebab they speak different languages. So when they speak different languages, we need to have the interpreter. So that interpreter, that middleman kita panggil dia sebagai middleware okay and then data security i think you already knew everything we need to secure the database the web server and also the telecommunication links okay all right dia kena ada security at three levels ni database tu pun nak kena secure web server pun nak secure the telecommunication links pun kena secure Ah, okay, so dia macam kita punya handphone lah. Ah, kan, kita punya handphone. Handphone kita tu pun kita nak secure. Kan, the telecommunication line kan. Mestilah kita nak pilih telecommunication line. Cellcom ke, uh, Maxis ke, yang hardly being hacked. Ah, okay, and then the database as well. Okay, so that is the end of part one. Okay, so like I have mentioned before, part 2 ni awak dah belajar. Normalization, apa relationship tu awak dah belajar. So, I do not think I have to, apa orang kata, re-explain again. Sebab awak dah belajar dan awak dah dapat good grades pun semester lepas. Betul kan? Okay, cumanya I still... Uh, provide links to YouTube channels, okay, for you. You can have reference lah, okay, uh, kalau awak nak refer. Okay, so these are the links to YouTube channel if you want to know about the data design terms. Okay, this is the YouTube channels if you want to know about ER diagrams. And this is the YouTube channels if you want to Uh, refresh your mind about data normalization. Tetapi, if you ask me, okay, uh, can I still use my notes from the ICT 200? Yes, no problem. You can proceed. The content is exactly the same. Tak ada pun dekat ISP 250. Oh, content dia berbeza dalam ICT 200. Dulu saya belajar lain pun. Tak, content dia tetap sama. Ah, okay. Alright. So, this is one case study. Okay. Available dekat dalam awak punya textbook. Okay. So, because of currently we are in ODL session. So, you might need uh, exposure on questions that relates to the case study. So, ini ialah contoh case study lah. Ah, okay, yang mana based on the case study, you are given the task. Ah, okay, so dia minta awak untuk differentiate. Apa beza primary key? Apa beza candidate key? Apa beza foreign key? Apa beza secondary key? Apa beza combination key? So, awak kena ingat how to apply this case. Primary key usually kena unique. Betul tak? Okay, and then foreign key usually kita nak connect dia dengan another table. 
Secondary key ni apa? Secondary key ataupun combination key. Combination key ni bermaksud you are going to have a combination of unique keys. Contohnya awak nak combine uh, IC dengan matrix ID tu. Ah, So, when you combine two attributes, okay, IC dengan awak punya uh, matrix ID, itu ialah contoh combination key. Ah, So, nampak tak? Uh, you have to know and then bila diberi case study tu, awak boleh jawab according to the given case study. Ah, Lepas tu, contoh soalan yang kedua, dia minta awak untuk explain the cross put notation. Ah, cross put notation 1M. Ah, kan? Macam contohnya macam 1M. <coughs> 1 to 1 M and K okay. So awak kena explain Bila masa nak pakai 1 to many Bila masa nak pakai 1 to 1 Bila masa nak pakai many to many And then ah uh, kan okay. And then uh, Charles say that he heard of the Data normalization Tetapi dia tak faham How you want to explain So data normalization we need to achieve lah When you want to Design your database kita kena achieve until the third and F. So, you akan ada dia punya step-step from one and F pergi kepada second and F pergi kepada third and F. Daripada one and F nak pergi kepada two and F, apa awak kena buat? Two and F nak pergi kepada tiga and F, apa yang awak kena buat? Ah, Okay, so ini ialah contoh-contoh soalan case study tetapi case study tu requires you to apply Your knowledge yang The theories, the knowledge that you have gained From the uh, Topic Okay Alright, so I think uh, For this first uh, part Okay, chapter 6 part A Kita boleh berhenti di sini dulu Insya Allah for the next video We are going to cover The third subtopic in Chapter 6 Thank you very much for lending me your ears And also for allowing Uh, me to land your focus okay insyaallah panjang umur kita jumpa next video thank you very much bye bye